Hello and welcome back to Shakes here. We are working on Much Ado About Nothing and today we get to hear from the Friar in Act 4, Scene 1 because he has a plan. So why does he need a plan? He needs a plan because Claudio and Hero were going to get married but then some of the guys saw Baraccio flirting with Margaret who was in Hero's window and they thought that Hero that it was Hero in her own bedroom, you know, crazy presumption. And they think that Hero has been untrue and unfaithful and that she is no longer a virgin. So Claudio like gave her back to her dad at the wedding and disavowed her and jilted her and he left and she passed out. And then Leonardo wanted to disown her saying, you know, how could my one and only child have brought such, such shame to this family, all that sort of thing. Um, and he just keeps railing and railing and railing until the friar, made the point yesterday he was like well but she couldn't have faked the physical reactions that she had to what was going on like when she blushed and passed out like she wasn't faking that so maybe there is a little grain of of hope that she's not guilty of these things at which point the other people who are still around which is like leonardo and beatrice and benedict they all start to be like well maybe 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 she was set up maybe it was a a thing whatever and the friar is like well you know, if they all think that maybe, maybe she didn't just pass out, but like she died, maybe we should just let them continue b to believe that she died and is dead. And Leonardo's like, why? What good is that gonna do? And the friar says, Mary, this well carried shall on her behalf change slander to remorse. That is some good. But not for that dream I on this strange course, but on this travail look for greater birth. She, dying, as it must be so maintained, upon the instant that she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For, it so falls out, that what we have, we prize not to the worth whilst we enjoy it. But being lacked and lost, why then we rack the value, then we find the virtue that possession would not show us whilst it was ours. So will it fare with Claudio, when he shall hear she died upon his words. The idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and every lovely organ of her life shall come apparelled in more precious habit, more moving delicate and full of life into the eye and prospect of his soul than when she lived indeed. Then shall he mourn. If ever love had interest in his liver and wish he had not so accused her. No, though he thought his accusation true, let this be so, and doubt not but success will fashion the event in better shape than I can lay it down in likelihood. But if all aim but this be leveled false, the supposition of the lady's death will quench the wonder of her infamy. And if it sort not well, you may conceal her as best befits her wounded reputation in some reclusive and religious life out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. So his point here is that if they pretend that she's dead, Claudio will mourn her and miss her in a way that he couldn't and wouldn't while she is alive. That whole, we don't appreciate the things that we have until we lose them. And add to that the fact that if they if they phrase it that um, she died, she died after what Claudio said or because of what Claudio said, then he gets the guilt that goes along with it too and all of that sort of thing. So he's like, this is he will think of her fondly and and maybe be able to to get over all of this and forgive her and and maybe we'll find out what actually happened as opposed to him jumping all these conclusions and, and so on and so forth and then he's also like you know and if if this doesn't work then the fact that she's dead can benefit the fact that she's dead can benefit her as opposed to having her like live with a besmirched reputation for the rest of her life and you know if this is if it really is that she was sleeping around with somebody else like you can send her off to a nunnery and nobody will be any the wiser to the situation so it's kind of a win-win-win situation and benedict is like you know i 
My loyalties are with Claudio, but this sounds like a good plan to me. So they all decide that yes, this is what they will do. They will pretend that Hero is dead. They take her off um, so that she can be like hidden and they can continue on with this and, and put together a funeral for her and all that sort of thing. And everybody leaves except for Beatrice and Benedict who remember each think that the other one is in love with them. So they're being a little bit nice and tender with each other or maybe just a little smidge nicer. But Beatrice is also like fuming. She's so angry that somebody would have done this to her cousin who is like sweet and innocent and all this sort of stuff. So they, Beatrice and Benedict actually do tell each other that they love each other more than anything. And she's like, well, if you really love, like there's, he's like, how can I prove that I love you? And she's like, well, if you love me and want to be in my favor, then go kill Claudio. And Benedict is like, ah, here, sure, yeah, I'll get right on that. And she's like, okay, then you don't love me. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 back up just a second. Like, I don't want to commit murder, but I want to prove to you that I'm your friend and that I love you and that I care about you and all this sort of stuff. And there's, there's some more back and forth and she gets to rail and like, if only I was a man, then like, I could go take care of this. I could go and confront him to a duel and, and all this sort of thing. And Benedict is finally like, okay, calm down, calm down. I'll take care of it. I will go, I will go and confront Claudio for you to prove to you that I'm your friend. He's like, you're, he doesn't necessarily agree to kill Claudio, but he agrees to at least go, go talk to Claudio or confront him or, or stuff along those lines. And that's the end of what loads of versions call act four, scene one. But as we know already, there are no scene breaks in the folio. So we're still just in act four, but that feels like a good place to wrap things up for today. So I will see you tomorrow when we figure out what happens with this whole like fake death plot that happens in the middle of a comedy. Cause you know, comedy, I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.